Hello YouTube, how the heck are you? Jailbait here with another episode of Star Drive 2, playing as the Draylock Council. Uh, in our last episode, towards the end, the Volfar Imperium uh, declared war on us again. Uh, they are unfortunately very foolish. Um, I think that uh, the only way to keep them from going to war with us, or any race going to war, is with non-aggression packs. So uh, I think we'll have to push for that with other races um, as soon as possible if we want to stay cle free and clear of war with them. Uh, which ultimately will be best because our money is getting low. We've got a negative income, which I don't like. And we're at war again, which uh, is something we really didn't want to do. We didn't want to be at war. But we're learning as the game progresses. So in future playthroughs, we'll know if we... And for you guys, if you're doing your own playthroughs as Draylocks, uh, you'll know that non-aggression practice are probably something you're going to want to try out. So, uh, we're going to continue on. Our Xeno Intelligence Agency is almost done, which is good. This is something that we can actually build on planets, and for each one, we get plus one research per, per turn per mole. Um, so we can actually generate a lot of mole... Uh, research with these intelligence agencies so I think that's gonna be really cool all right let's uh, continue things going um, unfortunately we have no trade uh, the polyps I'm pretty sure we have yeah our tolerance is really high we can't really do trade with them very easily anyways because they are isolationists so they don't do trade very well. But if we can get that going again, that would be good. In the meantime, let's just continue on. We can see there is uh, this fleet coming in. What we're going to have to do is pound them into the dust. Uh, we do have a pigeon, so we'll have to probably just go back, destroy Enelaus again. Uh, they've actually got a decent sized population there now which is unfortunate because we may end up having to destroy it. It's large, barren, poor, has ancient mines, although when I had it before, I didn't really see what it did. So, um, yeah, so let's uh, let this... Uh -huh. What is this? Merchant fleet. They must have been coming here for... I don't know why they were coming here. Okay, well, we're going to destroy them. This looks like maybe a staging area, so... I think it might be a good idea to come and destroy it early. Infested derelict. Your forces have encountered a derelict spacecraft of unknown origins. The hull appears to be intact with no signs of external damage. Most systems appear powered down, although a distinct radioactive signature indicates the ship's core is still at least partially engaged. Bioscans are returning positive for life signs. Okay. I also forgot to start our timer. Uh, noted. Perhaps we will turn with ground forces to investigate the mysterious derelict. Uh, order your forces to investigate the ship and capture it as possible. And our Xeno intelligence is done. Oh, that's here. So I sent our scout over here to that little thing here that we didn't know what that was. We still have a star that we've never explored. That seems odd. 
Okay. There's also this thing here. I don't know what the, the deal is with this creature fleet, but I'm really not in too big a hurry to go and just annihilate them because they look like big ships and I don't want to deal with it with them destroying us, especially while we're at war. Alright, so we are coming to Inlaus. Oh wait, first we've got to choose new new research. Um I think it's time we start doing some of these experimentals. Uh there's nothing too Self-contained community, plus one food, production, and residential. Oh, that's not residential. Research, plus one pop cap. Okay, that could be cool. Uh, this is an interesting thing. Um, you basically start with a free rover bay and a free aeroponics farm when you colonize a new world, but the it doubles the cost of colony ships. Uh, cost, but that could be cool. I just, it's just, we're really not looking to colonize anything else right off the bat here. Um, targeting computer will act three levels higher for purposes of accuracy calculations. That would be really good because our mass drivers miss so often, but I think a planetary supercomputer is going to be better for us. This I don't think matters which one we take. Um, the EMP torpedo can disable an entire ship with a single torpedo. Wow. That's probably what we'll go with. Uh, photon torpedoes. Their guide, gatekeeper jettisons. Small amount of payload. So they reduce the effectiveness at range. Oh, but they're powered by energy, so there's no ammunition required. That's pretty cool. And this is a damage over time torpedo. Not bad. Proximity mines, I wonder how that works. Oh, and then urban infrastructure. This is the minus 50% unhappiness for overcrowding. I think that's going to be really good for us. We could get this, which would increase our, our industry, but I think to keep our people happy, we're going to want the urban infrastructure. All right, so we're going to do seven turns. We're going to get some new stuff. Looks like they've got... All right, so here we go. We've got a, they've got a small fleet. I expect we will obliterate their faces. So let's fight this. Let's fight this thing. Draylock Invasion of Enlaeus. Alright, first we want to do is we want to find our pigeon. We're going to put our pigeon up here. We're going to tell it to run away. Next, we've got a bunch of falcons. We're going to move these back. Uh, Falcon, Falcon, Fly Swan. You can kind of see, I made the Falcons green. So if we move these back here, actually let's do it like this. I think we can, and then we'll put a Fly Swatter in front. Falcon. Falcon, fly swatter. <laughs> yeah.
Okay. Let's uh, start. You guys, I want you focused on that big ship there. You guys have already destroyed that ship. Look how fast we are just obliterating these things. Jeez. I didn't even need to send our pigeon away. <laughs> so, the power of the mass drivers, you can see, are very, very strong. So we've destroyed that fleet. We have... We're going to destroy this little thing here. Um, we could capture it, but we really need to not capture any more stuff. So, unfortunately for the population here, uh, we are going to make the Volfar wish they had never come to war with us. Sorry. All right, so we've taken down one of their population. You can see that each full population point is thirty um, is worth thirty civilian points, I guess, and our nukes take away two per um, uh, per bomb. This does this hurts ground troops. This hurts. Uh, buildings, 10% chance to destroy a building. We we did destroy one of their buildings. And then it just pollutes the crap out of it. Um, this pollution goes away one per turn until it reduces to zero. But in this, if in this bombing of this place, we are going to ra make it a radioactive ball of dust. So, it's unfortunate that we have to... Do resort to these tactics, but I can't capture it because I don't have, uh, I mean, we are eking by with our income. Getting another colony with more colony maintenance is just going to, to hurt us. Um, and I don't want to leave an enemy with, uh, a place that they can, uh, use to attack us again in the future. So, we are just going to bomb the crap out of it. And hopefully when we, by the time we get rid of this colony, um, they will realize their folly in trying to go to war with us. Also, what is our spies doing? Okay. So, we could see where their fleets are and what's happening with their fleets, but I don't think it matters. I think their tech is so low and their fleets are so, they're using such small um, hull sizes that they're not really going to be a threat to us no matter where they are. So, alright, we've built something in Etho 1. We need to set up construction of something else. So here's our first chance to build a Xeno Intelligence Agency. Uh, it is minus one. Uh, we have to actually start looking at the cost up here for building these things. Um, and with that in mind, I think it's a good idea to actually start building some of these money generating things uh, to help get our economy back into the black in a good way. The more of these uh, colonies we can make, you can see here it's at negative eight. Um, because of the improvements that we've done and there's no income based on farming. Uh, our income is two per person. So in order to get this reduced, we need to put something on the planet that is going to help stimulate some money. 
We also have no taxes. Taxes is something we may have to get into. But uh, we'll see. I think once this war goes away, once we establish trade again, we still have to go out and find some more races so that we can trade with them as well. Um, push for those non-aggression packs. Then things will get better. All right. Um, this is going to get destroyed next turn. I'm sorry, but it will happen. Okay. We eliminated an enemy mole. Draylock. Draylock. Uh, we've eliminated an enemy spy from the polyps. Scouts have arrived at the Indrax system. And Drell 1 completed their research lab. All right, so here's Idrax, Indrax, Indrax, Tiny Bear and Ultra Poor, Rich, Tiny Asteroid Belt, nothing, nothing to write home about, okay. Let's send you up here. I wanted to visit this star out here, and we'll probably do it out there. Now that we've got a bit more of an expansive end fire, our explorers can actually go out and visit a lot of these stars these star systems okay so here's an interesting thing they are sending a colony ship to our planet I say this is our planet because it's the planet we've wanted since the beginning where are you guys fly swatters that's fine you are gonna go over here and you are gonna guard this planet from these shenanigans since it's a colony ship um, as long as you have any kind of military ship here it will destroy whatever colony ship they try or you know any colony ship or any undefended ship so we'll just move them there so that they can't do that we do not want the Volfar setting up camp inside our zone with that in mind we're gonna have to build come to, to zero here uh, we're gonna lose some money here for a turn we're gonna have to build a colony ship of our own because they'll just keep trying to do it and once we're done with the war if we blow up one of their colony ships while we're you know at peace then that's gonna look really bad so we'll build a colony ship of our own set it up there and colonize uh, in tour three okay Core world pride of Drelok. The citizens of your empire consider Drelok to be one of your core worlds of your empire now. The inhabitants of your core world are proud to live and work in the beating heart of your empire. As a result, the Drelok, or, or Drelok will now enjoy a 5% bonus to approval rating. That's wonderful news. Okay, so you may be wondering why they didn't think they were core to begin with, since that was our home planet. Um, during the war with the Optrus, they did take Drelok for a time. And so, uh, they're basically just, I forgot to be, we should have been bombarding all these things, all these turns. Boom. Look at all that pollution. Jeez. Okay. All right, we've almost destroyed them. Next turn, we'll be done with this planet. Uh, we have a pretty large fleet coming in with some new ships, looks like. All right, let's see here. We've got more laser boats. That's interesting. They actually name all of their stuff. 
Laser boats. Laser boats. Just want to make sure they're not um, upgrading any of these things. These tiny little gooblers. Alright, this... Okay, so this is a screener. That would have problems if we were using missiles. So in our first war, we used a lot of missiles against them. It looks like they learned their lesson by building some screeners. Here's a bunch of missiles. Um, hopefully our fly swatters can deal with these missile boats, but it's good to know they've got and then a big fuel barge okay it's good to know that they've got these missile boats here now because we're going to want to take them out first uh, to minimize the amount of long range that they have okay so that's happening. We're going to learn our technology next turn. Uh, oh, we've also got this coming in. What are these? Oh, tiny little gooblers. Okay. We've actually got a couple of fleets moving in. Oh, just a, an extra dude. Okay. So, let's uh, fight this. Experimentation with energetic mediums have produced a higher density laser cannon round with a lower mass. The result is that all of our laser cannons are automatically upgraded to fire this superior round. The color is also blue, which is nice if you like blue more than red. So we learned blue lasers. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's keep going. This is interesting experimental stuff. Is there anything we n need? Absolutely. I kind of want to play with this a little bit and see what we can get out of it. Alright. Next turn. We're going to fight this stuff. So, I didn't check. Oh. And I didn't bomb. Okay, let's bombard. There it is. Colony destroyed. So once you bomb it enough that all of the population are gone, the colony is destroyed. At which point we can... I'm not going to leave the planet. I'm hoping that... Well, I guess it won't matter. Let's go ahead and attack them. Open space seems to give you more space in between to start with than when you're at a planet. So, if I can get them out into space, we may have a better chance of uh, having more long-range engagements. A colony ship has been completed at 1. Awesome. Thank you, 1. You go there. You can see their colony ship looks like they turned around and went somewhere else. They're going down this way now. If we had faster ships, we could theoretically chase them down. But, um, not really necessary. Okay. Um, I'm hoping after we destroy this fleet, the Volfar will want peace. Um, this is a pretty large fleet, so I'm assuming this is going to be one of their biggest things. And yeah, we got a space battle. So you can see there's, it seems like there's a lot more space in between uh, with the space battles. So we're going to move these guys way back, as before. We've got a falcon here. Our pigeon is going to go up here and retreat. Wait, I hope I didn't do... Sometimes... 
cancel those orders. Sometimes if you have, like when you start, you'll have all your ships selected and you'll move one up and some of them will not be, will still be selected when you try and retreat like your bomber and they'll all start to retreat. It's really annoying. Alright, so here's our other Falcon. Here's our fly swatter. I want our fly swatter up front. Able to destroy any incoming missiles. So we'll actually put them fairly close together so that they can use each other's flak and, and Vulcan or cannons as well. Alright. So one of the things we wanted to do was focus on whatever these things were to um you can see this is a long range this is a this is not this is their their fuel barge this is their screener and these two are their long range missile boats and you can see their range so we're going to want to take out these first so when we start the battle here Get out of there. I want you guys to focus there. I want you guys to focus not there. There. Oops. Uh, what are you guys doing? Okay, so little problem here. I don't know why, but these guys are flying around like crazy people, and they are. front load or front firing ships so I'm going to tell them to get their bucks back for crying out loud stop Now I did make these ships with pretty decent engines. Oh, and there, that's it. The threat has been destroyed. Um, did we? I think we lost a. Yeah, we lost a fly swatter. That's okay. Fly swatters are pretty cheap. Um, their exploration frigate retreated. That was really weird, though. I thought that their initial design had them set to sit there and not move, but you can see that with the uh, the engines, they were still actually fairly agile, fairly fairly mobile. The problem is that since they're only what are you doing? Okay, I guess they were following the ship that retreated um, and NLAS is no longer anything okay um, I guess since they were uh, or you can see so they're still fairly mobile but since they're forward firing only 
they basically have to turn and make sure that their forward arc is on where they want to shoot at, but uh, they should, still did pretty good. Um, now, fuel is still something we need to look at. Also, we need to make sure that we look at our ordnance because ordnance doesn't recharge while you're away from your home bases because why would they? Where, you know, it's not like you have supply ships. Now, what would be a cool thing that I think is that if you have unused freighters, they could um, ferry supplies like fuel and um, ammunition to your to your war fleet. I think that would make a lot of sense. They'd be at risk, just like in any other war, of having your trade or not your trade, but your supply lines being cut off by an enemy, but I think that would be an interesting aspect to add to the game um, just to make it a little bit more realistic, because in real wars, as you were, you don't send your army back, your invading army back to your hometown uh, every month to resupply. You have supply lines, you have trucks and things like that that are shipping ammunition, food, uh, clothing, whatever you need, your army needs, um, to your army so that your army can sit where it is and continue to, to advance onto the enemy, uh, on, into enemy soil or into enemy uh, towns and placements, whatever, um, without worrying about your supplies because you have a supply line coming from your rear. That's why... Um, things like paratroopers in World War II were so effective is they got dropped behind enemy lines and they could actually do a lot of damage to an enemy supply lines, leaving an enemy cut off from uh, ammunition and food so that they could eventually kind of just like, it's like modern day sieging of the old castles. You surround a castle, they can't get anything in, and you just sit there until that castle dies of starvation or they surrender. Um... But that's not in a lot of games that I've noticed. So I think if you're going to have an element where you can't resupply your ammunition naturally, you should be able to use your freighters to be your supply lines and come out and resupply your ships. But just an idea. All right. Uh, we have a planet that is not building anything. That's unacceptable. Alright, I would like to do another of this, but 30 turns is a lot. And I really want to get these... Um, oh, this is one that's out on the edge. I think we need an infantry base. And then... Let's see... You're about to go up in a population. That's good. Alright, I think maybe if we can produce more food here, we would build up our uh, income. So, after this, why don't you build soil enrichment? Alright, and that signals the end of our time for this episode. I want to do one more. We've got our colony ship going there. We've got our scout coming out this way. At this point, I think our scout can just go directly out to that star. Um, the Volfar Imperium has just had a really rough defeat here. Um, they have got no planet here, but they've got a, they've got planets here. They got a planet on brains, brains. I know what. And I have to assume because of their core uh, bubble that they've got planets here as well. In fact. I have to assume this is where their home their home world is. 
As you can see, Athergoron is... It's beautiful. It's toxic, but it's beautiful. <laughs> what? Oh, it is a large, abundant world, so... Another option for possibly terraforming in the future. But um, I'm hoping that we can destroy this little ship here. Let's uh, let's go ahead and just do that. Uh, two little things. I think we can safely auto that. Yes. Uh, we've stolen defensive flares. Good job, spies and moles. They've got another fleet coming in, but you can see these these fleets are are now tiny. They're one two ships. So the Volfar are really having a bad day. Um, I think if we come to their colony here in Brains, where they seem to have quite a bit of stuff, um, I'd really like to show you guys the power of mass drivers versus a starbase. Uh, soil enrichment technology. I hate trading. I hate when they demand stuff from us because... You can see our tolerance is way up. Um, even a small thing will be... Uh, we'd have to give them some money. Which is going to make our people a little bit pissy. Oh, they won't even do it because our people are kind of pissed about it. So, because of that, and these things are all way too high, it's basically, uh, it's suffer a approval rating hit or nothing. Um, or just give it to them for nothing. So what we might be able to do is have them give us some money. Yeah. It's about as good as we're going to get. I think these are, yeah, they're too much. So it's unfortunate, but it's pretty much what we got to do to keep them happy. Um, so it's all right. Uh, they may even actually be a little bit more happy because, yeah, so we agreed to trade. Gives them a small boost. We probably could have given that, just given it to them for nothing. And they would have um, liked us even more. But, uh, oh, looks like they killed our mole. Oh, so when that thing said that they we lost a mole that was Draylock, that was them killing our mole. That's really unfortunate. But we're almost to the point where we can put another one in, so that's fine. And here shortly our moles are going to be a lot more effective. Okay, so you can see here they've got a star base here. We're going to fight this real quick. I know we're past time, but that's... I really want to show you guys this before we end. Um, there's her pigeon... Okay, you are going to tr retreat. You can kind of see it's kind of highlighted and then not highlighted when you click it, so just make sure it's highlighted and they will run away. Uh, we'll pull everybody back as far as we can because we really don't want... This guy we're going to put in front for missile defense. All right. You can see one of those ships is just retreating, and then we're gonna attack this star base and just watch all these things just do massive damage to it. Boom, 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 boom. It's already yellow, red, destroyed. So, just ridiculous amounts of pain, and we killed their thing before it retreated. Mass drivers versus. Star bases are crazy good. 
just massively good. And you can see our fleet is building up quite a good experience level now, which is good. And then we'll have this planet blockaded. Now since this planet is large, one of the spies sent against the Volfar Imperium has been eliminated by their counter espionage forces. Was that our mole? No, just one of these guys. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to come here. We're not there yet. It's not blockaded even though we fought at the planet. Okay, that seems a little weird. Okay, there we go. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bombard but focus on their ground troops. Um... Or am I? Yeah. I want to take out their ground troops. Unfortunately, we did destroy some of their buildings. That is unfortunate and not um, really what I want for this planet, but so be it. Okay, it's fine. A social experiment in providing a place where the laws simply don't apply. When your people have an unsavory itch, they come here to scratch it. Plus 15 approval at a cost of 5 BC per turn in maintenance. Anything goes here. Plus 15 approval. Okay, that's that must have been our experimental technology was crazy lawless places. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Okay, so um, I'm going to focus on getting this supercomputer um, before we do any more experimental techs. I don't know how important these are. Uh, it looks like, I mean, they're all the same price, so we can knock them out pretty quick. But they really, we really don't know what they're doing. So let's get this uh, upgrade here for our, our science. We'll be able to knock them out even quicker. And now you can see we're blockaded brains one. There, it's a big planet with a lot of people. Um, and so 25% you can see, basically, we are stealing. Uh, and they're starving because they don't have enough food. Uh, but the, res the research and production output of this planet goes to our own empire um, up to 25%. So you can see our research bumped up a little bit and so did our... Uh, income. We were at zero, now we're at plus three because of stuff we're getting from the uh, that planet being blockaded. So, we're going to leave it there. I highly expect the Volfire Imperium to come to us for, with peace uh, very soon. Um, since we're blockading a large planet of theirs. And if not, well then what we may have to do is just uh, take it. Now this is a, a planet I probably will because the population is so high. They can produce a lot of, it's a Terran world, so they're going to be able to produce a lot of food, which in turn means they can produce a lot of money. So we can actually get this planet without a hit to our colony maintenance. Hopefully. Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for me in this episode. Appreciate you guys watching, your comments. Uh, thanks for uh, sticking with me even after the lost videos. But we're in a great place now, I think. Uh, we have the upper hand on the Volfar. And our next uh, action is going to be getting... When they sue for peace, I think we're going to try and force them into a, a non-aggression pact. And then we'll go out and look for other races and cultures... Um, that I don't like, but we can run away. Um, other cultures so that we can start getting trade agreements going with them. And again, we'll focus on some non-aggression packs as soon as possible with them so that we can avoid any of this, uh, ugliness of war in the future. So until then, uh, I've been Jailbait. 
and you guys live free, game hard.